We're going to look now at some shortcuts that can help speed up the data entry process. So we go into the data entry window. We saw in a previous video clip that one thing you can do to speed things up is to set some common settings. And if you've done this, you can go to the records menu and get your common settings and fill in some standard fields straight away. However, for this demonstration, we're not going to use that method. And a quick way of emptying all these fields is to press Ctrl and K and that empties the entire screen of anything that's in it at the moment. The other thing we saw in an earlier video clip was that it's a good idea to set up your filters before you start entering data, which you'll remember is from the records menu, change defaults, and here we have what we want at the moment. And we have our county set up and the group of species that we're going to be dealing with. You've probably discovered already that you can enter plant names either using the English name or part of it, or the scientific name or part of it, or if you're familiar with the code numbers that appear on the BSBI recording cards, you can just type those in and that will take you straight to the species you're looking for. The quantity field requires a number, but remember you can always enter zero and that mate interprets that as being present but not actually counted. The other option you have apart from the standard numbers is to use the day four codes dominant, abundant, frequent, occasional or rare and you simply type in the relevant letter, press enter and that mate translates that into the correct term. The stage box is the first of several that we are required to look up something from a list. You can do this by clicking on the label and choosing list possibles you then get a list of terms that are suitable. The shortcut way of doing that is simply to press the F2 key at the top of your keyboard and that takes you straight into the list. If you don't need to use a particular term in this stage field there's an even quicker way of filling it in which is simply to press enter and it will go to the default option for plants which is not recorded. When you get to the site field the best thing to do is to type in a question mark followed by your grid reference. Having done that, when you press enter, MapMate will look up all the sites that are nearest to the grid reference that you're trying to use, so you can immediately see whether there is already a site definition for the site that you're trying to enter or not. Another way that you can use this question mark facility is just to type in the 10 kilometer square that you're recording in and then you'll get to see all the sites that have been set up within that 10 kilometer square already. Going back to the grid reference that we tried to enter just now, when I press enter we can see that there is not in fact a site already set up for this grid reference. The longhand way of putting a new site in is to click on the site label add a new site and fill in all the information here. But there is a shortcut way of doing this. Keep the grid reference in place but delete the question mark and at the beginning of this row type in the name of your site and once you get to the end of the name you then immediately follow it with the at symbol and immediately follow that with the grid reference that you wish to use. And If you now press enter Nothing very much appears to happen, but you'll see that the grid reference is now enclosed in brackets. And if we go back to the site label and do view this entry, we can see that MapMate has filled in all the details for this site and it's calculated its county information based on the grid reference that's been typed in. And the habitat just goes down as unknown. That automatic process works very well nearly all the time. The only time you do have to be a little bit careful is if your grid reference is very close to a county boundary or close to the coast, in which case MapMate can't always calculate the right county for it. So it's worth going back and checking as we did then by doing site view this entry. But otherwise using that at symbol is a very quick way of doing things. So it's simply site name at symbol grid reference and then press enter and that gets calculated straight away. You can of course, if you don't wish to use the grid reference in this way, just type in the site name or part of it and press enter and again MapMate will find whatever it can that matches what you've typed in. 
The date field is self-explanatory. You just type in a date in any of the standard formats. MapMate will also accept date ranges. If you type in a, a number for the day and a number for the month and press enter, MapMate will assume that it's the current year that you're dealing with. One thing to be aware of with dates so, though is that if you type in a date before 2000, you need to give the full four digits. If I just type in 2nd of July 99, for instance, and press enter, MapMate interprets that as 2099. So to, if you want it to be 1999, you have to type out the full year. Status is another one of these lookup lists. So again, you can press F2 and be taken straight to the list. The recorder name, as you will have discovered, you just type in part of the name and it will find the list of people that match that entry. And when you get to the determiner, if you need the same person, you just press enter and it goes straight in. Method is a lookup list, but for many purposes you can use the field record stroke observation, and you can get to that by simply typing in f space forward slash enter, go straight there. For the reference field, once again you can use f2 to get a list, but that's not in a very helpful order, so usually it's better to type in the name of the author of the reference, press enter and you'll get a list of all the references associated with that author and with the most recent one at the top of the list. Finally, you have the comment field, which is optional. You can add to that if you need to, but it's uh, not essential. So, by using all those shortcuts, it can be quite quick to enter a record. But before you click the Save button to save your record, it's worth thinking whether you need to lock some fields before you carry on. If you do click save at this point, what will happen is that the record will be saved, but you'll then be faced with a completely blank data entry screen again. However, if you have a whole series of records from the same place on the same date, it would be a shame to have to keep typing in that information for every single one, and MapMate has a way around that so you don't have to. It's called field locking. You get to it from the fields menu at the top of the web data entry screen. Click on there and choose lock all valid fields. MapMate will then, all the fields here that are greyed out, will now be held in MapMate's memory so that when we click on the Save button, the record is saved, but all that information is kept, and we can now go on to add our next species, and press Save for that one, and so on through the list of species for that particular date and location. You can lock or unlock any of these fields individually as well, just by clicking on their label. You can unlock if you suddenly decide that you need to change that particular entry, and then lock it again. Similarly, if you just have one record with a different determiner, you can unlock that one, and lock and unlock these as you wish all the way through. Field locking is a very useful part of MapMate when you have a lot of data entry to do, and it's well worth getting into the habit of thinking about field locking before you click the first Save button from a list of species.